Okay, good morning. This week's Parsha is Parsha's by Yigash. We come to the rousing conclusion of the story with the brothers and Yosef. And as well, I'd like to, beyond this Parsha, and all these Parshas are really one type, one, one section, I want to focus on another topic that in our shul we've been talking about for the last four months. And I feel that this time of year it's extremely appropriate to synthesize this topic together with the Parshios. What is this topic I want to speak about? The topic is Shabbos. Shabbos, we know, as all the Jewish writings tell us, is the key to all of Yiddishkeit. All of Judaism depends on the Shabbos. We know that according to basic tenets of Judaism, that the Almighty Hashem Yisbarach created man to give him pleasure. That's the whole purpose of the creation of the world. The whole purpose of the Jewish people is to be that people whom God wanted to bestow this pleasure upon. And this pleasure is none other than the pleasure of experiencing God himself. And that experience of God himself is not merely on a physical level, but obviously has to be manifest in a spiritual level. Lutzada writes that the primary place for that pleasure is in the world to come, Olam Haba, we will not have the physical obstructions of the body that we have. Obviously, all of Judaism is focused on that end goal, that end goal of having God's purpose of the creation being realized, where there would be a people whom God could bestow this pleasure upon, and these people would be called the Bnei Yisrael. And although this pleasure will ultimately be felt in the world to come, but indeed, God wants us to enjoy this pleasure in this world, and this world is so valuable as a preparation for this ultimate pleasure in the next world. But certainly, there has to be a degree of this ta'anug, this pleasure. As the Navi says, Oz, oz tisanegel Hashem, and then you will delight in Hashem. The whole point of Yiddishkeit is, is to delight in Hashem. And unfortunately, for many Jews, they don't understand this concept. What does it mean to delight in Hashem, to feel the closeness of Hashem? It's a very spiritual concept. When we talk about Yiddishkeit, we talk about going to shul, putting on talus, putting on tefillin, blowing a shofar, separating challah, keeping the laws of family purity. There's so many things to do in Yiddishkeit, but we have to realize that they are all focused in one direction, and that one direction is to get us to, to the state of dveikus, of cleaving to Hashem. This is what the whole religion is based upon. All of Sefer Dvarim, which is the culmination of the five books of Moses, but which unfortunately, especially for the last, for, for the most of the book of Dvarim, is read over the summertime when people are on vacation and they don't hear rabbinic drushes on this. And there's almost week in, week out, it talks about dveikus, clinging to Hashem. It's not a question of just going to shul, but it's clinging to Hashem in the shul. It's not a question of just having a Seder table or having a Friday night meal, but it's clinging to Hashem during that. This is what the entire Yiddishkeit is all about. And unfortunately, there are many Jews who don't understand this, and more importantly, don't get this feeling. How does Shabbos fit into this? We know that Hashem, when He wanted to give the Torah to the Jewish people and he offered us and said that the end game and the end result is Olam Haba and the Jewish people wanted to get a taste of that so Hashem said I will give you a taste of it that is the Shabbos and the Shabbos is literally a taste of the world to come it is an outer worldly experience it is the experience of Dveikas to Hashem it's 25 hours of uninterrupted Dveikas to Hashem the Hasidic Shisforum write that one's definition of one's Jewishness, how Jewish is a person is dependent on how much he is misaneg el Hashem on Shabbos. And if a Jew looks at Shabbos as a day where you take a rest from the reek and you get your 12 hours of sleep on Friday night, sumptuous meals, Shabbos afternoon lap, 
and you look at the clock and you delay Shabbos to the last minute that's possible to bring it in and you look at the clock to find the first minute where you can take it out this is obviously someone who is not delighting in Hashem is not delighting in the Shabbos is not delighting in Dveikas and Hashem and therefore is missing out everything that the religion was meant to offer Shabbos is the day that we have to literally feel as if we are in Olam Haba as much as possible to the degree that a human being is physically capable of feeling this and this form right to the degree that a person does not feel this connection to Hashem in this world although you will be rewarded for everything you do but you will not have this dvekas in the world to come the way you leave this world and what you want in this world this is what you will have in the world to come exponentially increased but if Dveikas Hashem is not your thing in Yiddishkeit then you may get a reward but very distantly in the world to come and the primary benefit of the Dveikas Hashem will be one that one will not have as the Sfarm write a Jew just goes through the actions of his Judaism but doesn't feel anything about it doesn't feel this closeness to Hashem his experience of the world to come will be like a bench a bench has no feeling, has no emotion and your Yiddishkeit will have no feeling and emotion in this world and will not have any there's no, there's no instant presto changeo where all of a sudden oh it's going to be amazing now it's going to feel great now it never felt great my whole time but when I go to the world to come somehow it is all going to change that's nonsense you only will get in the world to come that which you were working so hard for in this world and that which you were able to taste or desire or long for or yearn for and achieve to some extent in the Oz Tisanik El Hashem then you will appreciate that in the world to come and this is what the Rats and Hashem is in making this whole concept of Yiddishkeit therefore Shabbos isn't just one of the 630 mitzvahs Shabbos is everything because the way a Jew lives his Shabbos is ultimately the way the Jew will live in his Yom Shekul or Shabbos this day of the world to come the day of the true Az Kisanig El Hashem and if a Jew does not appreciate the Shabbos then of course it will manifest itself in every aspect in his life in this world that will impact on his world to come as well unfortunately many many Jews do not see Shabbos as this way the effects of Christianity on us and the mythical Judeo-Christian ethic have people believing that whatever is true about the Christians is true about the Jews just in a little different way and just like the non-Jews have a Sunday so we have a Shabbos which is a Jewish Sunday but that's not what the Shabbos is the Shabbos is the true moments of delighting with Hashem and even if during six days of the week we find it hard it is challenging we live in a physical world and we're engaged in so many physical pursuits so it is so hard you have to work much harder to appreciate the Tanuk of Hashem during the week because you're involved in so much physical things Shabbos is the one gift as Hashem said to Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu matona tova yeshin bebeso tzurai. I have a beautiful present in my treasure house. Shabbos Shmo, and its name is Shabbos. Go teach it to the Jewish people. Because Shabbos is the core to everything. And if we can at least enjoy the Shabbos and reach a state of dveikas to Hashem on Shabbos, then we have a hope that it will spread into the coming week. And we can have dveikas for the entire Shabbos and the entire week but let's look at the Jewish people around and would we say that we are achieving that would we say that our shuls by and large are places where people love to daven or do we find their places when you know there's no tachanan to be said on that day a great smile and joy comes over us because oh thank God the daven will be less what if the rabbis made a decree and said you know what we looked deeply and we've decided that we're going to cut davening times in half would there be a major uproar of Jews saying no we can't have this we live in an age where people are talking in shuls people are not achieving their dvekas during davening people are not enjoying their Yiddishkeit it's something that I was trained to from a youth it's a robotic practice amongst many and the real solution is to be able to achieve what we're supposed to achieve at least on Shabbos and have that carry over into the rest of the week 
So therefore, I want to look at these parshios and make a, a suggestion for the next coming Shabbos for all of us. And there's many, many challenges. And this talk is not meant to solve all the problems and address all the issues of enjoying Shabbos. You'll have to come to my shul for a Shabbos to really appreciate what the Shabbos is like. And you'll have to learn a lot more. But one of the big challenges to be able to enjoy the Shabbos is how can I move from the mundane world of the six days of the week where I'm so involved in making a living and I'm rushing with the hustle and bustle and so much focus on just survival, especially in these difficult economic times. How can you expect me to now just turn on at 4.23 on a Friday afternoon, turn right on to Shabbos and just jump into this spiritual mode and become a person who's attached to Hashem. It's not possible. There's such great extremes from each other. The Sunday through Friday is one extreme. It's the extreme of physicality. And the Shabbos is the extreme of spirituality. And that's why we find it so challenging because we are pretty comfortable in the Sunday through Friday zone. And the Shabbos zone is the one we're not very used to. And we don't live our lives as Shabbos Jews. So how are we going to be able to jump from one extreme to the other extreme? And the truth is that this is one of the critical issues as we see in these partials dealing with Yosef and the brothers. Hashem's game plan was to take up, but in the reverse issue than what the issue we're talking about here. We're talking about the tremendous change from the weekday into the Shabbos. While in the story of Yosef and his brothers, Hashem's game plan was to bring Klal Yisrael, the holy Klal Yisrael, the Klal Yisrael who lived a life of Shabbos, to bring them down to Mitzrayim, to the land that's the antithesis of spirituality. It's a land full of physicality. And how would the Jewish people, the holy Jewish people, be able to move into a world that's totally physical and to survive in a country so physical as Mitzrayim? This would be the great challenge. As it is hinted to in this week's Parsha, in Perak Memvav, Pasuk Chavches, where y Yaakov sends Yehuda down, Ves Yehuda Shalach Lefonav El Yosef, Lahoros Lefonav Goshna, where Yaakov sent Yehud Yehuda down before to Yosef, for him to show him the area of Goshna. By Yavo Artsa Goshen, and they came to the land of Goshen. Now, what's interesting, the Torah selects the word Goshna, and we know that an Ohe at the end of a word means El Goshen or Le Goshen. You have to understand, like, why does the Torah sometimes choose to say Le or Goshna? Why we ended with an Ohe? But over here, there's a very beautiful hint. The letters Goshna is Gimel Shin Nunhe. And we just finished the holiday of Hanukkah. And we know on that dreidel we have the letters Nun, Gimel, Shin, Hey. Same letters, just a different order. That stands for Nes, Kadol, Hayosham. There was a great miracle that happened in Hanukkah where we were able to infuse spirituality back into a world that was so far removed from spirituality. It took a great Nes for that to happen. And Yaakov would have to go down to Eretz Mitzrayim a spiritual people into a world that was so physical and mundane. So he sent them Goshna. Goshna with the same letters to show we have to have the same Nes Kadol HaYosham. And how did this Nes happen? And what was the means of that happening? That is what we're going to talk about for the next few minutes. The real issue when we're dealing with polaric extremes is that for there to be some kind of movement from one extreme to the other, there has to be some vehicle of transition, some type of connector, something that can ease the polaric extreme from one side to the other side. And there's a particular meta that is required to succeed in this. We know in the spheres there are the 10 metos, starting from Kesser on the top, going all the way to Malchus on the bottom. And basically what these mitos do is it shows us how Hashem operates in this world and how we are meant to operate in this world.
And as we go through the meadows of Chesed, Gvura, Tiferes, you sowed and hold uh, Netzach, you sowed uh, Netzach and hold. We go through them, we're trying to get to a final result. And before we come down to Malchus, which is the bottom line, we have a meter that is called Yisod, which literally translates to be the word foundation, or as we'll see, it means really the concept of bonding. We say in the davening, L'cho Hashem ha-gedulu va-gevur va-tiferes va-neitzach va-hahod ki chol va-shomayim uva-oretz. And that lists all the midos of Hashem. But for Yisod, it doesn't say Yisod, it says ki chol va-shomayim uva-oretz. Shomayim, shomayim the heavens that are so far away from us, so spiritual. That's the oretz and the earth below that is so physical and mundane. Two worlds that are worlds apart. But yet Hashem wants them to be merged together. And that is Yisod. As the Pesach says, Yismuchu HaShamayim V'sogel HaOretz. Yismuchu HaShamayim. The Shamayim should rejoice. V'sogel HaOretz. And the land will sing out and be happy. The beginning letters of Yismuchu HaShamayim is Yud Hey. V'sogel HaOretz is Vav Hey. The yud hey vav hey, the ultimate manifestation of Hashem's oneness in this world is manifest when there's a merging of heaven and earth together. Taking the polaric extremes of Kedusha and that of Chol and bringing them together. This is the Mida of Yesod. To show that God's world is not two worlds, two separate worlds. A spiritual world which you live one way and a physical world which you live a different way and never the twain shall meet. That is a big problem. That's where one can learn so much, so many holy things, but one has to translate into reality. It doesn't happen because there are two worlds that are worlds apart. And one has to have the Mida of Yesod. And this Yesod, every one of the Midos relates to one of the Shiva's Roim, the seven shepherds, and this Mida relates to Yosef. As it says, we know only one person is called with the accolade of Tzaddik, and it's Yosef at Tzaddik. And as the Pesach says, Tzadik Yesod Olam. A Tzadik is the Yesod Olam. He is the foundation of the world. He is the type of personality that merges the heaven and earth together. Even in the words Tzadik, the words Tzadik have the words Kates and Dai. Kates means extremes. A Tzadik is able to take the Kates, but say Dai. There's enough extremism. And we have to bring the two worlds together. And this is what Yosef was all about. Bringing the two worlds together. You see this, for example, as we start Yosef's life two weeks ago. He has two dreams. He has a dream first of the brothers working in the fields and their sheaves are bowing down to his sheaves. And then he has the dream of the 11 stars and the sun and moon bowing down to him. Obviously, this is an issue of Yosef becoming the leader. But why were there two dreams necessary? Each one seems to bring the message across. I believe the answer is, I haven't seen this in a safer, but I believe this is the answer. That this dream was showing, as we mentioned two weeks ago in the class, of the Tzaddik's dreams have to be fulfilled. But Hashem was showing Yosef what his potential is. His potential is the person who can take these two different worlds, two different extreme worlds. There's the world of working in the field, the wheat, finances, economy. That's one kind of a dream. That's one kind of an issue Yosef would have to deal with in life. And then we have, and that's the Sagel Ha'aretz. But then there had to be Yismu Ha'ashamayim. There had to be the rejoicing of the heavens. And that's the sun and the moon and the stars all bowing down to Yosef. And this was a tremendous challenge for Yosef. How could he, on the one hand, be so successful in one realm and be successful in the other realm? And this was Yosef's charge in life. This was his nevua, this was his mission in life. To be successful in both and to realize they're really not two separate dreams, but they're one grand vision of Yosef that has to be merged, to which Yosef struggled with. But you can see how Yosef is the quintessential Renaissance man. And you can begin to see where the brothers would resent such a person. The brothers 
probably felt, you know, we stay in one realm, the other realm, but how can you feel comfortable in both realms? And we see throughout Yosef's life, he learned all the Torah, the beautiful Torah from his father for 17 years. And yet such a tzaddik, he goes down to Mitzrayim, a place of immorality, a place of total physicality. And yet he's able to maintain the standards of who he is. He's able to succeed in the world and be a successful servant for Potiphar, be the tremendous viceroy, be the people, person who saves the entire Egyptian economy and for that matter the world economy. Very into this world. But he did not give up the world of spirituality that he was in. So much so that even after separated from his father for 22 years, in this week's Parsha, he sends the calves back to his father to say, I remember the last shtickle Torah you learned with me. The last shtickle Torah you learned with me. With the Egla Arufa, with the heifer, we break its neck. Again, the idea of the neck, the neck is the place that's understood as the merging of the top and bottom of a person, which heaven and earth, the same concept. I didn't forget the message, he didn't forget the Torah. He was able to withstand all the issues of immorality. This is who Yosef is. This is the Yosef who doesn't forget his Torah learning and yet learns 70 new languages. This is the Yosef who prepares the land of Goshen, where Nes Kadol HaYosham, where he is totally at ease in both types of worlds. And so successful that Yaakov is able to have the 17 best years of his life, not in Eretz Yisrael, but in Chutz Eretz to fulfill Yismuchu HaShemayim V'Sagel Ha'aretz. And this is not an easy task. Yosef had to overcome many obstacles in order to achieve his goals. And more important for the Renaissance man of Yesod is that people don't understand him. Because most people fit in one realm or the other. You fit into the physical realm, you fit into the spiritual realm, like-minded people like to stay together. But somebody that can be in your realm, but still is come from the other realm, that gets people nervous. You want to be from our Frum Chevra, stay in the Frum Chevra, but don't talk to the non-religious people, because they may destroy you. And if you're in the non-religious realm, they say stay with us and don't associate with the religious people, because they're fanatics. And if you show any love and 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 ability to live in both realms, both sides attack you. And we see this is precisely what Yosef had to withstand. His brothers did not understand his overtures in trying to blend in the physical world into the spiritual world, curling his hair, making himself look presentable, enjoying this physical world. And the people of Mitzrayim had all kinds of problems understanding what kind of spiritual person is here. So much so that they were so adamantly against circumcising themselves in order to buy the grain, but power forced them to do this. The man of Yesod, in the initial stages, has lots of resistance from all sides. But if he masters it well, is able to hold it all together. So what was it about Yosef? And what is it about this meat of Yesod? What, what must one do to succeed in living in both realms? And we see from Yosef a couple things. Number one, when Yosef told power in last week's parsha to find an ish navon v'chacham to save food during the seven years of, of plenty. Why did he need an ish navon v'chacham? So the rabbis explained that what is a chacham? It says, they say a chacham aroes anolot. A Chacham is a person who sees the future. Doesn't understand the future, but he sees the future. Yosef said it's going to be seven years of plenty and then seven years of hunger. So people who know this, okay, it's a piece of information. And during my seven years of, 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 of plenty, I'll enjoy myself. Yeah, I know there's seven years of hunger. We'll deal with it when we have to deal with it. I know that there's a problem. But you don't see that there's a problem. The Chacham is roa esanolot. He mamish sees that future is there right now at the same time. You could be living with the plenty and yet see the starvation and hunger at the same time. And that's a skill. To be able to hold two realities at the same time. 
And therefore, when Yosef was saving up every morsel he saved, he looked at a morsel of grain and said, you know, this morsel of grain right now looks like it's so much extra. It's extra, I don't need, I don't have to worry. But he said, but seven years from now, this morsel of grain will save a starving person, will be life for somebody. And therefore, he could look at the, the piece of grain today and say, ah, oh, it's not such a big deal for right now. We have a lot, which is true. And don't go too overboard on it in this time right now, but realize that grain later is going to save people's lives. So I have to value it now, even though now it doesn't appear so valuable, but later it will be so valuable. And that's what he said in Ish Chacham, Eisei Chacham, Aroa Esa Nolad. Yosef could see the future. He could see the, 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 the imminent destruction that would happen. He could see and feel the cries and the pains and the people dying. And if you have that feeling right now when it's good, you're able to live your way now understanding what is going on later. Now when you have a lot, but then understand later when there'll be a little bit. This is exactly the rabbis tell us of what our life in this world is all about. This year, God gives us 70, this lifetime, God gives us 70 years of plenty. Just so much time. But it's going to be a time of hunger. It's going to be a time when you can't make a mitzvah, you can't buy a mitzvah in the world to come. All you'll live off of is what you made during your 70 years. You need to be a chacham. You need to realize there's a world to come, there's an eternal reality. We have to do things right now to be able to move into that reality, that power of re of seeing. And what is this power of re Where does it really come from? And Yosef said it himself to the brothers. Ki kim anochi, I'm God-fearing. He had yiras Hashem. Reish is chokhmah yiras Hashem. The beginning of chokhmah is yiras Hashem. He said, chokhmah aros anolad. How can you see the future after yiras Hashem? And yiras Hashem is not simply fear of God. But yiras Hashem comes from the word ra'at to see. To be able to have a broad vision. Simple years of Hashem means I do this, a very Hashem will punish me. But it's not so much because you're afraid Hashem will punish me, because it's the vision of understanding these consequences to actions. There's the ability to be in awe of reality and to realize where you're coming from, where are you going to, who are you going to answer to. If you come to those three things, you'll never do an Avera. To be inspired and in awe of the emerging reality of things that come into being. That is year. A year is to see. To be able to see what the past is, to see what the future is, and to understand what the present has to be because of that. That's all part of the meta of Yesod. Because when you're able to see the past and see the future, you can see the heavens, you can see the earth. And you realize that whatever I do, I have to see what the implications are on all levels and not in one separate, unique, small, parochial place. This is the Mida of Yesod. Yismuchu HaShamayim V'Sogel HaAretz. Yosef at 17 was shown this. We already learned he went a little bit too fast. He wanted to already have everything. He wanted to be the king right away even though he wasn't worthy of being the king. So he had to learn what it means to be a real Yore Elohim, to be a real Eisei Ochacham Aroes Anolad, and to live your life in a way to realize that I got two worlds that I got to keep an eye on at all times. And whatever I do, I have to make sure that both worlds are addressed to at all times. And not just look in one place. And that's the real issue of bonding. The trouble we have in relationships and to bond with other people is I only see my world. And I don't see the other person's world. If I understood the other person, where they're coming from, in their world, and I understand where I'm coming from, I know where both people are coming from, then I won't, I will do the things that will enable the two worlds to be together. But if I only see my world and the other person only sees their world, then how do you ever bond? And that's the problem. To live in the moment is incorrect. Because I have to live in the past, live in the future, and produce the moment. And that is Yisod. Yisod takes all the other Midos and realizes the Midos are amazing. Chesed, Gvur, Tiferes, Netzach, Od are amazing. But if it doesn't give me the Malchus, if it doesn't translate itself, then it's all worthless. And we could be spending so much time on our Yiddishkeit, hours and hours and hours and hours with Chesed and Gvur and Tiferes. But we don't know where it's supposed to take us to. We don't have that mind of where it's supposed to lead us and what it's supposed to look like. 
If I don't know how the picture is going to come out, how do I know what to do in terms of making the picture? And sometimes you get so pic- focused on the goal, you forget what the present has to be. You forget what the past is. The goal is such, but I have to do the things that are appropriate. Well, what is my past skill sets that I have to use to reach that goal? It's all what makes up the tzaddik. It's all what makes up the tzaddik yesod olam. And that's what makes Yosef hot tzaddik. And of course, something like this has to give Hashem a lot of credit. When Paro says, I heard you can translate dreams, he says, Bilodai, it's not me. Ki, ki what? Ki yor, ki manohi. I am a God-fearing person. All these statements, giving Hashem credit, keeping the eye on the ball. That is what Yosef was. And what does this have to do with Shabbos, you may ask? Well, as it is in space, so it is in time. Just like in space, you need something to connect the heavens and earth. You need someone to connect the spiritual realm with the physical realm. So too it is in time. It is impossible to move from Thursday into Shabbos. It cannot happen. As we said, the five days of the week are one world. Shabbos is another world. A person cannot move from one world to the next so simply. There needs to be a transition. A great rabbi once said that there were great challenges for the Jews in the 1900s who came to North America and the great challenge was to keep the Shabbos and many Jews failed. If you didn't keep the Shabbos, you lost your job and ultimately many Jews succumbed and they didn't keep the Shabbos. And there were those who kept the Shabbos and fought valiantly to win the battle of Shabbos. But it was so hard, it was so difficult. And in retrospect, a rabbi mentioned, he said, we may have won the battle of Shabbos, but we lost the battle of Arab Shabbos. And this is what our great challenge is for this generation. It's not the battle of Shabbos. You don't have to work on Shabbos anymore. But it's the battle of Arab Shabbos. And one of the greatest challenges we have is that unfortunately in the secular world, we have two days off now, Shabbos, and Saturday and Sunday, but not Friday. And somehow most Jews look at Shabbos as the way you collapse from the other five days of working so hard, where you're falling asleep at the Friday night table with your face in your soup, sleeping off most of the Shabbos, sauntering in on a Shabbos morning whenever you wake up, making sure not to miss out on the Kiddush and making sure to enjoy the Kiddush clubs and making Shabbos into a physical day. And then of course Sunday you have to spend on doing the important things like going shopping, going out and having fun with the kids. And that's losing and when we have the Shabbos physically, physically we may be Shomer Shabbos, but we're really not enjoying the Shabbos. We're not having Oynik Shabbos. It's Oynik Sunday. Sunday's the day for Oynik, not Shabbos. The problem is Shabbos is becoming the heir of Sunday. And that's the desecration of the Shabbos. You know why? Because we don't have an heir of Shabbos. But we do, but we don't. Hashem's plan was that to merge every day of the week at a partner. Come Shabbos, it sits alone by itself. Every day of the week has a name. Yom Rishon, Yom Sheni, Yom Shishi. But Friday is not called Yom Shishi as much as it's called Erev Shabbos Kodesh. Erev Shabbos Kodesh, which we call Shabbos Eve. But really, what is Erev? Erev from Arev. Arev, something that, that it's, it's a guarantor something that can be pleasant. It's a way to make the Shabbos pleasant and sweet. It's from Erev Shabbos. Five days of Earth days, Shabbos a holy day. Erev Shabbos doesn't have its own definition. It's just the transitional day from Thursday to Shabbos. And without that transition, without that meat of Yesod, You don't know how to keep the five days. You don't know how to keep the Shabbos. It's two worlds that never come together. And since we're more accustomed to five as opposed to one, 
So Shabbos becomes just a modified day of the five. It's a day just like on, on Tuesday you rest, on Tuesday for an hour, on Shabbos you rest for 15 hours. That's all. And that's the sixth day. The sixth day is the sixth Mida. The sixth Mida of the lower levels is Yisod. It is Yisod. Friday is the Mida of Yisod. It is the day of Yosef Atzadik. It is the day where it can merge in from Friday into Shabbos. And therefore Friday has to be totally different than the other five days of the week. It's a synthesis of both holy and not holy. Friday must be treated different than the other five days for you to have success on Shabbos and more importantly to have success on Matzi Shabbos to transition back into the other five days of the week. And therefore we look at the writings we see how a Friday was meant to be spent. A Friday was meant to be spent by getting up very early on Friday night, Friday, uh, Friday morning. Very early, three, four o'clock in the morning, spending time preparing for Shabbos, working, you're working, it's physical work. But the first five days a week is for the malacha of making money, making you a living. But the malacha of Erev Shabbos is the malacha to get ready for Shabbos now. Everything you do on Thursday, as I'm doing it, Lekavit Shabbos, Lekavit Shabbos, now really should be all, all six days of the week. But you have to have the day of the Yisod, of the transition. And that transition is I'm working, I'm still working, but it's working only for things I'm going to need for Shabbos. And that must stop by Chatzos, by 12 o'clock. Because that's it, no more working at all. Comes the Chatzos, another step in the transition. For men, everything has to be ready by Chatzos and Shabbos. Number one, everything. The food has to be cooked, the chulans on the oven are ready, in the stove, the food's ready, the chalas are baked, the house smells from Shabbos by Chatzos. There's no running around. There's no working till 4.15, getting into the house a minute before Shabbos. That's not Arab Shabbos. You finished, it's all done. Men, women, all finished. If you never have to go to work on Friday, you never have to go to work, but if you're done by Chatzos, and then what do the men, everybody then, what do you do? You take a shower, you bathe, a man goes to the mikvah, to wash yourself away from the filth and the mundaneness of the five days of the week. You should know in Hebrew, what do we call the five days of the week? They call you me chol. Chol, chol from the word chola, sick. And that's why, pardon the pun, they are weak days. W-E-A-K, weak days. They're not strong. Arab Shabbos wants to build us up to the strong day of Shabbos. We have to wash ourselves away you go to the shower and think, Ay, all the tumma, all the things I've seen during the week are get washed away, especially going into the mikvah. You dip once into the mikvah and say, that's getting rid of all the schmutz, all the garbage from the rest of the week. And the second one is bringing in the kiddush that you dip the second time in. It is customary to take a nap on Erev Shabbos. When you come back from the mikvah, you take the nap because we know that sleeping is one sixtieth of death. And you have to die and say goodbye and I'm dead from those other days of the week. They're finished. When I wake up, I'm a new person now. I'm a Shabbos Jew. You have to be a Shomer Shabbos, a person who keeps Shabbos. You're a Shomer. A Shomer has to stay awake when he's keep guarding something. You have to guard the Kedushas of Shabbos. How can you stay awake if you're tired? You have to sleep in the afternoon. At least take some kind of nap to refresh yourself. So you have Koach. You say, I may have trouble sleeping Friday night. You're not supposed to sleep that much Friday night. So to be up as much as you can on Shabbos, because Shabbos is the most amazing day of the week. Therefore, we take that nap. We say goodbye to the rest of the week. And maybe dream of what Shabbos can become, but more importantly, have the strength to be wide awake and to be able to enjoy the Shabbos to have all your strength for the Shabbos. The rabbis say, if someone does not sleep on Arab Shabbos, the Friday night meal is like a weekday meal. So you take that nap, change into Shabbos clothes, early men and women, 
and you taste the Shabbos foods. When you should have home from school, it should be a pot of cholent ready to eat right then and there. Kugel ready to eat right then and there. Some of the pastries a little bit, and before you take a bite, you say the words that each tzaddik would greet another tzaddik with. Olamcha tira b'chayecha. You should be blessed that Olamcha, your world, tira, you should see b'chayecha in your lifetime. Olamcha, your ultimate Olam Haba. Why do you got to wait till Olam Haba? Tira b'chayecha, see it in your lifetime. When will you see it? You'll see it on Shabbos. And just like Shabbos is to the world to come, so is Erev Shabbos to Shabbos. Shabbos is taste the world to come. And you should taste the Shabbos and enjoy the Shabbos. And when you really enjoy Dvekas and Shabbos, why wait? Olam chatir v'chayecha. So you take a piece of kugel on Friday afternoon and say, why do I got to wait till Shabbos for the kugel? I can have it on air of Shabbos, which means to say, why do I got to wait to enjoy the Shabbos on Shabbos? I can enjoy the Shabbos on air of Shabbos. It's not just the kugel. It's much more than the kugel. It's enjoying the Dvekas Tashem on air of Shabbos. You play it out in a physical way. But that already gets you into the mindset, it's already Shabbos, I'm tasting the Shabbos. I can't wait for the Shabbos. I'm yearning for the Shabbos. I'm longing for the Shabbos. I prepare, it's been the ultimate goal of the week to learn Torah. Get yourself in the spiritual mindset. And also to do Teshuvah. And finally, to reach your Ashirim song of songs, the love song between us and Hashem. And then you're ready to light the candles, which are the candles. Kiner lokim nishmas adam, the soul of man is the candle of God. That when you light the candles, you're really lighting up your neshama. My neshama is now alive. It's a day of the soul, not a day of the body, and I've transitioned properly into it. And the men go out and say Kabbalah Shabbos, and don't look for the quick 45 minute Kabbalah Shabbos, Min Chamar Kabbalah Shabbos, gotta get home as soon as possible. But Kabbalah Shabbos is a service itself, it's an avoda. It's an avoda to sing and dance, and you're happy that you're bringing the Shabbos. It's the greatest day of the week. You're so overjoyed. Like you go to a wedding, because that's exactly what Shabbos is it's a wedding. And we know nobody works on the day of a wedding. Everything is at Erev Chasana. It's Erev Chasana. Everything's focused for the Chasana. Even the Shmorgasborg, you start eating before the Chasana. Everything. And that's what this is. It should be so much simcha. But how can you have simcha when you're at work the whole day? Now let's talk a little bit about this tshuva business. Why do we have to do tshuva? Well, there's a concept in Judaism that says that an avera is machaba mitzvah. An avera extinguishes a mitzvah. And Rabbi Yonah explains and says that it can extinguish a mitzvah, but tshuva can relight the mitzvah. Let me explain for a few minutes what that means. Let's look at a relationship. Let's say a husband does a lot of good things for his wife. He does a lot of errands for his wife. He says to his wife, he loves her. He picks her up. He gets things for her. He buys her presents. He's affectionate to her. Amazing. There's amazing mitzvahs he's doing. But then he calls her an idiot. He comes home without late without saying he's going to be late. That's called Navero. Aver Machaba Mitzvah. The rabbis say, even though there's one concept that every mitzvah you do counts, and every Aver you do counts, and we don't mathematically subtract one for another and say, I did a million mitzvahs and half a million Averas, and I end up with a net balance of a half a million mitzvahs. It doesn't work that way. You must be rewarded for every mitzvah. But there's two aspects of the reward of a mitzvah. There's the reward that you get paid out, and then there's the reward of the devekus, that the mitzvah connects you to Hashem. Avera machaba mitzvah means that if as much as you may have done things that deserve some kind of reward, but the real connection can only be if there are no averas. If a person, if a husband wants to feel close to his wife, he does a lot of good things, but does some averas to her. She may be indebted to him, and he may get dinner cooked for him, but closeness he won't have with her. Because in the back of her mind, she's saying he probably just thinks I'm an idiot. He doesn't really care about me. Tveikus can't not be achieved if you're still holding on to Averos. 
You could get rewarded, but you won't have to make us. A husband has to do tshuva, say, you know, I'll never call you an idiot again. I'll never, I'll never come late again without calling because I care about you. And then all those mitzvahs relight and bring that to Vegas. So it is in human relationships, so it is with Hashem. You want to have to make this Hashem, you can't have it if you're carrying a virus. And that's the big problem. Shabbos is the day of Shabbos is the day where all the misses you bring to the table. You should be able to, to, to tisan egg on all the misses you did during the six days of the week. And bask in the glow of the closest of all the misses you did in the six days of the week. But how can that happen if we're carrying a virus with ourselves? If we're carrying a virus with ourselves, we can't take it with us. So, how do you, and that's a barrier. If the, if the light has been extinguished and the dvek is extinguished, how are you going to enjoy Shabbos? That's where tshuva comes into place. Friday afternoon, serious tshuva, serious tears. I wasn't careful in this miss, I wasn't careful in that miss. That means I really didn't care so much about you, Hashem, and I feel terrible about that. And I want it to improve. I'm going to try so much harder in the coming week. They tell stories in Europe, there would be cities where the whole villages, where the whole village would be in shul two hours before Shabbos and the rov was giving a barn burning drush and they were all crying and tearing. Why? Is that the way to bring in a Shabbos? Yes, because you're trying to be, get rid of the Averos. Because those Averos are extinguishing the light of the mitzvahs which are extinguishing the ability to enjoy the Shabbos. And you have to spend some serious teshuva time every era of Shabbos to clean out the system, to allow the mitzvahs to light up. So when the woman lights the candles, she's really lighting what, what? The mitzvahs of the week. The Averis have extinguished the candles during the week. And the wife wants to light the candles. She wants to know those mitzvahs are vibrant and alive. But how can they be vibrant and alive if she's carrying the Averis and the family's carrying the Averis from the week? It's a gross mis mis misrepresentation unless tshuva happens first. And not just tshuva between you and Hashem, but there's another important aspect that the Hasidic form write. That since Shabbos is a pleasure and is a spiritual goal that's beyond natural, to enjoy Shabbos, to enjoy this other world experience is not logical. It is supernatural. And we have to find many sources in the Torah Whenever Hashem wanted to get the Jews to go to a super end of reality, it was always Vayakel. He gathered them all together. When the Jewish people are together, they can achieve levels that are beyond their abilities. And Shabbos is one of those that's beyond their abilities. And a person can only really get Siyat HaDashma and help from Hashem is if he's connected, as if the Jews as a group take on the Shabbos. And you can't take on Shabbos of a group if you aren't getting along with each other. We may be physically together, but if I hate the person's guts, then we're not together. And only when an entire community is at peace and harmony with each other, and together, bringing in the Shabbos together, not in small shtibles for convenience on a Friday night, because it's a fast davening, and I won't have to spend a lot of time in shul. That's not called being a community. But being together as a community in the shul, Physically, there's a lot of people. Spiritually, you've asked mechila from people. And you've asked mechila from Hashem. And that's what you need time on Erev Shabbos for. Then the barriers are broken. Then the mitzvahs are able to light up. Then the achdus and the unity of the people is one. And now you've got everything riding with you coming into Shabbos. You light the candles. You have the Kabbalah Shabbos. The transition is complete. You are now able to say, I'm a tzaddik, yesod olam, and I can fulfill yesmuchu hashamayim v'sogel ha'aretz. Now you think, there's a nice theory, but it's not possible. There's a real world out there. Rabbi, it was an amazing thing you told me. But Rabbi, can you get with it? We live in the 21st century. You gotta work on Friday. And if you don't work on Friday, you don't live. Rabbi, you gotta be, there is this world, you're too spaced out, maybe for your, your, uh, your Shalmis who don't work. But for us normal people, we work. 
So therefore, this is all a great theory. Maybe in the summer, maybe I could squeeze an hour in on a long Friday, but it's just theory. It was a wonderful theory, but it's of no use to me. So the answer to that is also in this week's Parsha. When Yosef revealed himself to the brothers, he said, Ani Yosef ha'oda v'chai, I am Yosef, are my brothers still alive? And we know the famous question is asked, why did he ask if his father is still alive? He had just asked them before. You would have just told him five minutes before, we have an elderly father, he will die if Binyamin doesn't come back. Why do you have to ask if his father is still alive? And we know the famous Medrash, where the Medrash says, Oili omadin, oili omatachacha, Woe to the day of judgment, woe, woe to the day of rebuke. Yosef was the smallest of the tribes when he rebuked the brothers. They had no answer for him. They could not answer him. What's going to happen on the day of rebuke when Hashem will show each person who he is? He will not be able to respond. And we know the Beis HaLevi's famous interpretation is as such. There's going to be two things. What's the difference between Din and Cheshman? Judgment and accounting. Hashem will say, why didn't you give tzedakah? And you'll say, I didn't have enough money. Hashem will say, why didn't you go to shul? I didn't have enough time. We'll have excuses. There'll be a din and there'll be excuses. Excuses alone don't get you anywhere. But at least you don't get embarrassed. But then we'll come to tochacha. And Hashem will, will edit together all the film clips. And I'll edit the clip where a person asks you for tzedakah and you said, I ain't got the money. And then he puts the next clip where he sees that you spent $2,000 gambling in Aurelia. And that's going to be the teichacha, that's going to be the rebuke. The rebuke is going to say, what are you talking, you're a liar. You're inconsistent. You, 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 re you relied on your excuse, you have no money, but then for things you wanted to have money for, you had money for. You didn't have time to go to shul, but you had time to read the whole paper from cover to cover for two hours. That's why you had no time to go to shul. That's going to be the tochacha. That'll be the, the ultimate rebuke. We're going to want to put your head in the sand because you see you're self-contradicted your own life and the embarrassment will be unbelievable. And that's what Yosef said. He said, Ani Yosef, I am Yosef. You treated me terrible. But why didn't you worry about it? I see with Binyamin, where there's no bias, you said, we can't have, Binyamin has to come back or our father will die. And Yosef says, Ani Yosef, I'm Yosef. Why didn't you figure the same thing out? Why didn't you say the same thing? Why didn't you say, Haoda Vichai? Could our father still live if I was sold? There's a contradiction in your own words. And the brothers had nothing to answer. So what's going to happen 120 years from now? 120 years from now, we'll all come up to the Bez and Shomala. We'll come to the heavenly court. And Hashem's going to say, look, look at the kind of Shabbos you had. The kind of Shabbos you had. You davened at the shtibel across the street because it went through davening very quickly. You made sure to eat as fast as you could. You worked to the last minute. You didn't have a Shabbos where it was meant to be had. You slept most of the day. You read the newspaper on Shabbos. You did everything except really cling to me. You're going to say, well, Hashem, what do you want? It was a tough life. I never really had, had a proper air of Shabbos because you know how hard life is, Hashem. I was working so hard. My boss, my boss never wouldn't take me off. If I wouldn't take off Friday, they'd fire me. And since I, Hashem said, you never kept an air of Shabbos in your life. He says, I couldn't keep an air of Shabbos in my life. But you're another rabbi, I explained it to you. He says, yeah, but I couldn't. I couldn't because I'm boss. And I'd lose the job, and I couldn't, and I couldn't, I couldn't, I didn't have enough bitachon. But it, you, you made it so hard. That's the din. But then it's going to come the toichacha. You know what Hashem is going to answer you? He's going to say, Merry Christmas. And you're going to look at Hashem and say, what? It says, Merry Christmas. Because what's your answer on December 25th, 2009? We're the same boss who wouldn't let you take off work on Friday the whole year long. But on December 25th, he gave you the whole day off and many even the day before. 
Did you at least try to make one beautiful Shabbos in your life? Did you at least cry to me and say, Hashem, I know what I'm supposed to be like, and I know I'm weak, but I have this one day, and this one air of Shabbos, I will show you what I would be if you would give me every Friday off. I'm giving you a sample, because I don't have to work on Friday. And I'll keep Erev Shabbos in the most beautiful way. And I dive into Hashem to help me appreciate what Shabbos is like. Then there'll be no tochacha. And the truth is, those people who work for themselves should be taking Friday off and have a little more bitachan. And those who have to work for somebody, at least should ask them, can I have Friday off? And even if they say no, at least you tried. And then you should dive into Hashem always. Hashem, find me another job where I could have Friday off and to cry for it. And even if Hashem doesn't give it to you, at least He knows what you wanted. But now you have no answer this Friday. If this Friday you don't bring in the Shabbos properly, there's only one answer. It's because you don't want it. And at least come to Hashem and say, you know what Hashem, I don't like Shabbos. And at least you have a point to begin to do some tshuva. So this is the test of this special Shabbos. And you may say, but Rabbi, you know, it says we need to keep two Shabboses in order to bring the Mashiach. So what will one Shabbos out? So then Hashem will answer you also. He'll say, Happy New Year's. Because not only am I giving you one Friday off, I'm giving you two Fridays off. Two Fridays off where you can't do anything but get ready for Shabbos. But if you think it's more important to, rock, to watch the Rose Bowl and the Orange Bowl, and other football games that are on New Year's. If that's your hachanas for Shabbos, then it shows where you're at and not in Shabbos. This is the opportunity. This is the Parsha. This is the Parsha. For 50 weeks of the year, there's been din. Why haven't you been keeping air of Shabbos? And everybody's got answers. The ultimate tachacha is going to come in the next two Fridays. There's no excuse. Don't want to say, I don't know how to do it, because the rabbi just told you how to do it. And if you're still not sure, you can call me up. <laughs> you can call me up and I'll tell you exactly how to do it. But these are the guidelines. These are the guidelines. This is the assault. And we said it's not easy. Being the person who showed is not easy. Like Yosef had to overcome many <laughs> obstacles in order to achieve the goals of Shabbos. Our friends, our relatives may not understand us. Our boss at work may not understand us. Our business associates may not understand us. But we have to understand what you saw it is. To live in the extremes of tzad, die. So, kates, kates. Kates are the extremes. Die, it's enough of extremes. To have a Friday that's meant to be a Friday, an Arab Shabbos. <coughs> To bring in the Kedusha of Shabbos is something what I'm saying is many of us don't even understand what the Shabbos is. But if we don't even understand what Friday is, Erev Shabbos will never understand what Shabbos is. Chazal says if we can keep two Shabbos properly, we could bring the Mashiach. Everybody's looking for all easy ways to bring the Mashiach. Say this to him, that to him. The answer is right in your doorstep. Keep two Shabbos. But more importantly, keep two Erev Shabbos. The power of Yosef Atzadik is very strong with us in these weeks. You have Yosef this Shabbos, you have Yosef next Shabbos. Next Shabbos ends with a Chazak. It would be such a chizuk for the rest of the year if we had two Shabboses, two Arab Shabboses. They were celebrated really properly. It'd be a Chazak for the rest of the Sefer, for the rest of Torah, for the rest of the year. But the Yitzhahara will be full blazing knowing that that's the opportunity. So he'll make sure that Vaughn Mills will be open even on Christmas. And of course, there'll be sales one in a million that you could never get again, except on this December 25th. There'll be friends calling you, you know, let, let's go sledding. And I'm sure the Yates will make sure there'll be some nice snow to make it hard to negotiate, to get around. It's a time to strengthen yourself. It's trying to make sure everybody's in shul Friday night to bring in the Shabbos with singing and dancing, to really appreciate what Shabbos is. Let me close with a story. The story took place in the city of Polnoy. 
with Rabbi Yaakov Yosef of Tolno, Polnoi, better known as the Toldos Yaakov Yosef, and Rabbi Nachman of Haradenka, who were both disciples of the Baal Shem Tov. They decided to spend the Shabbos in Mezhibuz. So they left early Friday morning from Polnoi to go to Mezhibuz. If you leave early, you'll be in Mezhibuz by noon. So they're starting on the road, they haven't gone half the distance and all of a sudden they see ahead of them a broad regal carriage trimmed with gold and ivory, drawn with four white horses. Obviously it was a carriage of a wealthy person, but he wasn't in any hurry to get where he had to go. He obviously wasn't going to Mezhibuz for Shabbos. And you'd figure they could pass them, but it was the winter, so there was snow all over, it's only one lane. So, unfortunately, Rabbi Yaakov Yosef and Rabbi Nachman of Haradenko, they had to go very slow. And Rabbi Yaakov Yosef was a bit frustrated, he was agitated. He says, we're not going to make it in time for Shabbos, what's going to happen? But Rabbi Nachman, however, kept us calm and said, remember, everything's going to be okay, Hashem takes care of everything. And as disciples of the Baal Shem Tov, they should certainly know that everything Hashem guides is for a perfect purpose. Less than an hour later, they're still going very slow. They came to a complete halt. And spread it on the road ahead, you could see a company of Russian soldiers who was obvious that their job for the day, as a way they were stepping on the ground, was to compact the mud, with their ro uh, the mud on the road with their feet. That was the way they did their construction. And that really drew things to a standstill. So now the Toldos is like going out of his mind, saying, we're not going to make it for sure now. We've got two problems. Brother Nachman said, don't worry. Hashem will work everything out. It'll all work out. A few minutes later, all of a sudden, the commander of the company notices the regal carriage that's in front of their carriage. He says, ooh, this must be a very important person. The Tsar probably would want this person to go through. He tells the soldiers, spread out, make a, a little line just for this carriage to go through. And the regal carriage went through, and the carriage that had Rabbi Yaakov Yosef and Rabbi Nachman went right behind it. Just like when you go behind an ambulance, you know, it's not legal, but you go behind an ambulance, you get through, that's kind of they went right through. So they made it through that. A few minutes later, there was a fork in the road. The regal carriage went to the left. And the road to Mezhibus to the right was open sailing. And the two tzaddik have made it in Mezhibus for plenty of time. But they only would have made it because the carriage was stopping them, was slowing them down. But it would get them through even a greater hurdle. Rabbi Sai, we're on a slow wagon trying to get to Mezhibus. Mezhibus, the Baal Shem Tov's Shabbos and Mezhibuz, you can imagine what it was like. It was Yismuchu HaShemayim Segel Haaretz. We say it's going to be very hard for us to get to Mezhibuz. It's going to be very hard to get to Shabbos. It's a slow wagon of work. There's construction going on. There's all kinds of impediments. But they have to have the Amunah that you can reach Shabbos. Hashem should give us the courage, the strength, and the ability to take these words seriously. And though you haven't really felt what Oz Tisana Gel Hashem is, and you may not even feel it at the end of these two Shabbos, but you've told Hashem, I really want it badly. And I've tried my hardest. And I'm sure in that schus, in the schus of Yosef at Tzadik, <coughs> and all the Tzadikim who kept Shabbos, and if we daven, we go through all these things and really do chew and say, Hashem, I want to enjoy the Shabbos. I want to feel what this otherworldly Shabbos is. And you say the Shir Hashim, you get to believe what if we have a love relationship. And you really dance and sing and let the outward activities impact on the inner feelings. Hashem will bless us so that next Shabbos, Shabbos morning when we're in Shul, with most of the two Shabbos already passed, we'll say, Chazak, Chazak, Venis Chazak. Of Mamish, a strong and powerful Shabbos, and the merit of keeping those two Shabboses, Hashem will bring the Mashiach, the Meher of Yamenu Amen.